Hi, Sarah Ellen Smith here, and I am going to decorate a bisque vase today that was thrown by John Arnott, wonderful potter and good friend. And I'm going to do an iris pattern. I'm starting out with a blue, a deep blue glaze, and I'm using a Sumi brush. This one is actually made for, um, for pottery. Um, it's a big brush. This is quite large, but that point can be very tiny. It's very nice. And I've done this pattern so many times. It might have been one of the first patterns that I started uh, doing because I had irises growing outside of the pottery, that uh, St. Lawrence Pottery, and uh, I had lots of irises to work with to look at. There we go. And I'm going to do this in real time so you can see that how long it takes. Okay. This is my second iris. They usually come in twos if you planted them correctly. There. I guess this would be what's called a bearded um, iris. Now, I'm going to use this stamp that I've made. It's a sponge. I think it was probably used for uh, stenciling or something. Uh, it came with a bottle, but I used, I saw that the sponge was a nice sponge. So I cut out with the X-Acto knife. I cut this flower. It's like a little periwinkle flower, I guess you'd call it. Anyway, I use it quite a bit and uh, I'm going to put some flowers in. I think they're going to be, I'm going to use the red glaze with a little bit of blue on top. So it'll make a nice little purpley color. And this is not an exact science here, but um, it comes out nice, I think. So I'll put that on like that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that first one always was a little gloppy. There. Okay, that's good. And then um, I have a little yellow glaze here. Under glaze, under glaze, I should say. And I'm going to come in and I always use one color at one time. I don't work on one little thing over and over. You know, I basically come in mostly because I, I do so, so many of them that I can't really afford to spend too much time fussing, right? So I use one color at a time. Now I'm going to have some little flowers. I don't know what there'd be sort of like, I don't know. I don't know what these are. I, I see them out growing in the field. I'm guessing that they're probably some sort of um, goldenrod or something, maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, I usually use threes here on this part. And uh, maybe I'll put one over here too, just sort of like that. Now, now it's time for the green. Okay, so let's We'll put these irises in first. The iris. Here's a stem. There's another stem. And yet one other stem for the bud. It's interesting working <laughs> on a piece that isn't flat. <laughs> it takes a few years to figure this out, I think. Maybe. Maybe I'm slow, but it took me a while to get this. And I'll get one. You have to be kind of careful how you lay down the glaze because every stroke shows. Every time you put the brush down, that stroke will show. So you want it to flow nicely. And sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. See how I'm switching the brush around to get the, the, um, the sharp edge? Sometimes you can, you might want to come back in and give it a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So that's the irises greenery. 
Uh, might come in just a little bit under there. Okay, now I'll do the the leaves for this. And I, these are this leaf pattern. I, I just love this. This is kind of I guess it's toll painting or something. Um, I think of it as sumi because you're using you're actually using the brush and pushing down and lifting up to get that that um, leaf. So it's pushing down, lift up. Very intentional. Everything is intentional. When I'm working, I'm I'm thinking constantly about, you know, how it's going to look. It's very important to be intentional. Okay, so that I'm getting a little fussy here. Um, so that's a nice simple pattern right there. Now I use the brush one yet another way. I'm going to go from the tip up and do a round leaf like that. Or what starts out as a long, round leaf. And then as you work your way up, it gets a little sharper. But you can see how I'm putting, I'm using the tip. Let me go over here and show. Using the tip down and up, down and up, down and up there like that. Okay, so that's giving a lot of is, uh, visual interest here. I think I might have room for a little butterfly maybe. Or a, or some kind of um, little insect cr critter. Okay, so now I just go through and give it a look and see if I like all the way it's going. I know I originally when I do this, I would draw everything out in pencil and carefully think, you know, figure it out. But, and, and I needed to do that. I mean, y'all, you, you know, y'all have to do that occasionally when you're starting out. Um, but now it's uh, now it's sort of just comes out and I don't really have to think about it too much. So that's a nice design so far, I think. Maybe not. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'll come in with, um, a little yellow, a little bit more yellow, maybe. Okay. I guess we'll do, we'll do a butterfly here. i to do a layer of yellow. Like that. Okay. And, um... Maybe red, so we'll get a nice little orange going here. Sort of monarchish. Again, if you want to, you can draw this all out. If you feel uncomfortable about just slapping a butterfly on a vase and you're not really sure how to do it, you know, you can use the pencil. Just be careful what pencil you use because uh, if you, I have, uh, I just use a number two pencil if I want to draw on and it'll burn off in the kiln, which is great. But there are some pencils that will, uh, which will resist the, the glaze or, uh, yeah, resist it. And uh, it's um, good not to do that because <laughs> I, I did have a pencil that I really loved using, but it ha apparently had some sort of wax in it that kept the glaze from um, from attaching to the piece, which uh, of course only used that only made that mistake once. As <laughs> that's how I always like to learn, it's like make a lot of mistakes. Okay, so I'm coming in with the black now, and of course my black is giving me a little bit of problem today not really flowing as well as I'd like. We just learned that sometimes if you put a little bit of um, Epsom salts in your underglaze, it kind of helps it flow, but not too much because it gets glumpy. Okay. I don't know why it's 
just not flowing very well today. <clears throat> I'm going to make some adjustments here. Okay, this should help. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Sometimes you just have to fix your brush. And I, I think that you just have to get away from the idea of things being quite perfect like if you're working on paper of course you can you can make it perfect but this is going to get glazed and then it's going to fire and sometimes it, things don't always come out this the way you think they will so it's sometimes it's better not to invest a ton of emotion into what you're doing here if you're doing any kind of production pottery which of course this is this is you know uh in the end it look it 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 looks like an art pottery but it's production. I do a lot of these, you know, um, and this pattern I've done over and over again, the iris pattern. So, um, the art is really more in the doing for me. It's in the process. Okay. Yeah. My brush is now working right. As you can see, it's got a little flow to it. It's looking nice. It's got a little action going there. I'm actually glad that it's um, this black is doing this so you can see how I, I just kind of have to cope with it and figure out how to make it work. There's the bud. These irises that I am painting are actually ones that I had planted um, or the, you know, the model for these irises are ones that I planted that were my great grandmother's actually. And I'd moved her them over and over through the years and sort of followed me back home to the St. Lawrence River. I kept transplanting them. <clears throat> so they kind of mean something to me. Okay, so that, oops, there we go. That looks pretty good. This may be not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go and outline some of these little periwinkle flowers, whatever they are. I don't know what they are, <laughs> but I've seen them. <laughs> not getting too fussy just an outline get just a hint of what the petals get a little depth there to that yellow in the center I'm gonna keep the brush moving if the brush isn't moving things aren't getting done This, and this leaf, I love doing this leaf. This is really fun to work. It's very organic and flows nicely. It kind of reminds me of those days of working with the Tsumi brush on paper. <clears throat> and again, I can't really invest a ton of time on these because you know I might have 10 more to do today so you know for me and actually I, I think sometimes this the speed kind of helps I think it loosens it up and and makes it fun because I'm enjoying that you know having that level of speed and especially for this this yellow um what is it called? A goldenrod kind of thing. I love doing this one too. This is fun. I just very loosely go through. It's kind of a lively little flower. Oops. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't do, do that kind of happy tree thing, but <laughs> oh dear. Okay. 
So we're just going to keep going like this on the yellow flowers and the So uh, sometimes I like to uh, add, do different kinds of flowers. So, th but this is kind of the, this pattern, I've ended up liking this an awful lot, but I do do, I um, have the irises yellow sometimes. They're very pretty that way. Okay. Here goes the butterfly. And I'm going very careful on this one because I want, don't want to mess it up too much. This is a little fussy, but it's worth it. They look so nice fired up. And I don't get too, too busy with it, but enough to get the detail, I guess. Okay. This might end up being a, not a monarch, but maybe a viceroy. <laughs> okay. Now what I can do, I take my trusty X-Acto knife and I want some dots on the end of the wings of this butterfly. So I'm just going to scrape out a little on top of the black and scrape a little away rather than trying to paint around and make those white marks. I'm just going to do that. Just make sure there's no little edges there. That looks good, I think. And this will, this will fire up quite nice and orange. And of course, I don't have an example of it, but <laughs> I do have an example of the iris right here. I have the iris pattern on a picture, and you can see how that comes out. So there you have it. Sarah Ellen Smith. Check it out. Thank you.